Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to show you how to create an eye follower morph for the Genesis 9 figure. It's the same for teeth, and this is something, because we have separate geometry for eyes and teeth on the Genesis 9 figure, this is sometimes necessary if you're dialing in a figure shape and you want the eyes to deform in a particular manner to match the new body shape. Let me show you an example here. This is a morph that I've made, uh, imported from a Genesis 2 figure, actually. Uh, this is Keiko. And Keiko, while the body deforms quite nicely, the eyes could do with a bit of an improvement. So the eyes, even though they follow the position of the figure, their size needs to change. And that needs to update. And this is um, what I'm going to show you how to create that. So in principle, I've taken the eyes and exported them out together with the reference geometry. And and then I've just changed their size in Blender and I've exported that again as an OBJ. Here's what that looks like. So this is the actual Genesis 2 figure. If we go and just look at that in that studio, this was the original morph and you can see that the eyes are larger here. So I've exported that out just so that I can see the eyes and then together with that I've imported my base eyes which are you know too small and then I've enlarged them like that in, with the help of the reference geometry so that they match. I have a supporter exclusive video if you wanted to see me do this. I've recorded that separately. I thought this isn't quite relevant to our session here so I have it as a you know if you're interested in that it's, it's available. So I have just done this and if I dial up this morph all I need to do is import this and make sure it's named just the same as the eyes. So with eyes and mouth, you can think of those things as follower clothing almost. If you think about a t-shirt and you dial in a custom figure morph on the figure, then that studio is looking for the same morph or with the morph with the same name inside the clothing item. And if it finds it, it knows how to deform the follower clothing. If it doesn't find it, it generates a morph with the same name and it kind of tries to do its own thing, which is what's happened here with the eyes. It knows, well, they need to be in a different position, but other than that, I have no information what to do and it just kind of ends up with this. So we can give it that information by essentially overwriting this morph that was auto-generated. So if we look at my figure here under morphs, this is my figure name. This is the name I'm dialing in and it's just called Keiko G9 in my case. If I go and switch to my eye figure, then I can see that Das Studio has generated a kind of a hidden morph here. It's grayed out. It's a hidden morph and it's dialed this up to 100%, but it's given it the same name. So when I bring in my thing now with Morph Loader, I need to make sure it has the same name so that it gets overwritten. Let's go and do that. So with the eye selected, I'll head over to Edit Object Morph Loader Pro. I'll go and find my morph, which I believe I've called G1 Eyes Fit Keiko Fit 4 or something cryptic like that. So it's certainly not the name that Das Studio knows it as. And I need to make sure I'm going to go and override the existing morph. I don't want this to be unique. I want this to be overwriting a morph that potentially has that name. I'm also going to go and check reverse deformations just out of habit. And then up here where it gives it the name, it just takes this from the file name. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to double click into this and call it the same as what this morph is known as already. If you are PA and you want to distribute a morph, you have to follow a fairly rigid structure there. You have to put your initials and what type of morph that is. I'm not exactly sure what the convention is. So for me, for my demo, I'll just call it what the original is called. Keiko G9. But if you were to distribute this, make sure it's unique enough that it doesn't override or conflict with any existing formulas. With that done and dusted, let me hit accept. And what should happen is that my eyes should now pop into place because the morph is already dialed up. That's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted. So if I go back to my Genesis 9 figure and dial the figure morph out, you can see that my eyes are totally following. It's exactly what I want. And for the mouth, it's exactly the same. So it behaves much like follower clothing. If you're familiar with that concept of creating a specific fit morph for a specific body shape, it's exactly the same principle. Make sure you import your morph with the same name that the main figure dials in and that same morph is then being dialed in on the figure. Perfect. Now Keiko can look. Oh yeah, that's also another thing I wanted to show you here. Look 
up, down, left, right. That's another thing we can see. Side, side is working fine. We don't need any adjustment morphs there. And then I believe up and down also works fine. Yes, there we go. Perfect. Awesome stuff. I hope this was helpful. Have fun modeling characters and converting characters and God knows what else. And I'll hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.